Power BI July 2018 update is here. I bring you the highlights and this one is a game changer. I'll cover only the key updates. If I missed the one that was your favorite, leave a comment and let me know. So I'm going to tell you about the number one game changing feature in this release. And if you're annoyed by that dotted line showing up, I'm going to talk about that too. Now, if you want to become a Power BI Pro, make sure to click subscribe and click the bell so you're notified whenever I go live to answer your Power BI questions. Now, before I talk about the game changing feature, let me set up some context. Now, if your company is anything like one of the companies that I work for and work with, then there's possibly some friction between IT and business. Maybe it's like this or maybe it's like this. But all of that is about to change. Instead of IT versus business, it's going to be IT and business and it's going to look like this. All right, so how is this feature going to impact IT and business and self-service BI? Now, let's look at it for, uh, for a little bit from the IT's perspective. Now, I usually speak from the business user behalf, but if you look at it from the IT perspective, they usually have a built-in uh, data warehouse or a data model, which they have spent a lot of energy, money, time, resources to build. And they would like the business user to use it. And if they're using Power BI, IT would prefer that the business user connected to it using direct query, where they do not import the data. Now, typically as a business user, I like importing data, and I'll tell you why. Because in direct query, if you do connect that, you can build any report off of that central model. But uh, the challenge between uh, is that often those models could be like 95% of what you need, 99% of what you need, but there's often that one piece or maybe more that you need to pull in from other sources. And this is something that was not possible earlier, but that's about to change, my friend, and that's gonna change the game. So let me just show you the feature. So here in this Power BI desktop file, I'm gonna connect to a SQL Server that's supposedly the my data warehouse for my company and as you notice I use direct query here now I'm going to select the tables I need and even though the button says load notice the load time here it's really quick and you notice it didn't say rows because it didn't it didn't copy any of these rows it just established a direct connection to the source and I can slice and dice it as I want but as you're seeing here I can also connect and bring in an excel sheet or another data source that, I, oh, this is missing from my data warehouse, but I'm just going to bring it in from the source that I have access to. And of course, once that there, you can kind of clean shape transform. And, uh, and next, I'm going to set up a relationship. Now, the model isn't perfect. I kind of did this in a hurry. But the example here is we have the class sales class product coming from the data warehouse. And this product department head entity is coming from a different location, which is in an Excel file in my case. But I can link them up and, and be able to slice and dice and show the data, show all my reports across these data set. One is a direct query connection to my data warehouse, to that central repository, and the other is just some file that I needed to use in my model. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature and it's gonna be a win-win for both IT and business. Now this is a preview feature, so make sure you turn it on uh, before you try to use it. And of course, this deserves a detailed video of its own, and I promise to do that. Uh, just make sure you uh, uh, stay subscribed, that way you're notified whenever that new video goes live. Whoa, that was a big one, but let's move on to the reporting features. And this is where the dotted line comes in. So this did catch me by surprise. I was like, how do I get rid of this? Well, it turns out it's a good thing. So this actually comes from a new feature called wallpaper formatting. Let me just show you how it works. So before this, if you size your window a different way, it's possible that you show you saw this gray area next to your dashboard. And you know, truth be told, I was kind of okay with it. But the new feature allows you to kind of blend it in and have the smooth white experience so that it doesn't kind of stand out regardless of how, how your window is shaped, how your report is being displayed. Uh, now, the dotted line, that is only for the author. So it's not going to show up for the end users when they're looking at that report, but the dotted line just kind of reminds you that that's where the boundary of the report is, so you don't try dragging a visual outside of that. Uh, so yeah, it's just a helper for you, and it's going to be there as long as you keep using the wallpaper and keep your page background transparent. We have a new visual header. So this is the old look, and contrast that with the new look. So earlier, there was a band at the top of every graph and it was kind of obtrusive and now it's blended in 
and it's smart. If it doesn't have space at the top, it can be displayed at the bottom. Um, and uh, it, besides just looking a lot more elegant, it also has other bells and whistles built in. So it also gives you a lot of control over exactly what is shown in that header. And I'll just give you one quick scenario of how that could be used. Imagine if you have a, a graph with capability of drill down. Now let's say in this scenario you do want to drill down, but after that you want to remove these buttons. You don't want the end user to be, a, be able to interact with it. Just maybe to simplify things. I mean, this is the experience you want them to have. It's drilled down and that's it. You want to leave it there. Well, in that case you can turn these off. Now if you try it though, you would notice, you may notice, that it doesn't seem to have any impact, that the buttons are still there. Well, the buttons are actually always shown in Power BI Desktop authoring mode. Now, if you do publish it online, in the viewing experience, the buttons will be will not be shown if you have turned them off. So in this case, I turned off our drilling, and you notice that it's, it's a lot cleaner look. Those buttons, that functionality is not available in the visual header. The sorting experience is now cleaner. These two were actually squished together in one option, and now it's separate, sort descending, sort ascending, and sort by. We now have tool tips for table and matrix. Now this is something that you do need to toggle on, but once you do, and let me show you in the file. Now let's talk about tool tips. So tool tips, of course, you could have your, your default tool tips. And notice the, the measure here is variance, but I've added sales and order count in tool tips on my field box. You can see right there. And that's uh, that's showing just a regular tool tip. And of course we had the report page tool tip where you could you could see like a full report page, not just uh, not just uh, a bunch of numbers. And, and so those have been pretty cool. And now those are available using uh, in your tables and matrix matrix as well. So you have your default tooltip and you have uh, your report card tooltip as well. So you can set uh, either of those up. Formatting pane is a lot improved. It's a much cleaner design. Uh, this has been a busy space, but with some of these uh, tweaks that they did, it, it just looks a lot more elegant and a lot easier to use. So certainly kudos to the Power BI team for that quick win. Let's move on to talk about uh, some of these analytics and data connectivity items. For analytics, if you right click on the graph, it may depend on the graph type, you would have this option to analyze and find uh, distribution factor insights. And once you do that, it kind of digs through your data and uh, uses artificial intelligence to figure these things out, presents the results to you. You can scroll through, and if you like what you see, you can also pin it back to your report. So definitely check it out, see how it works with your data set. Web by example connector. So here, uh, if you have connected to websites, sometimes if they have a simple table, it's pretty straightforward to bring them in, but at other times they have a complicated structure and it's harder to bring them in. So here, if you use this URL for an example, if I connect that, and again, uh, frankly, I hadn't even noticed this button, but it's right there, it's add table using examples. And if you do that, it's gonna bring up the page. And what happened here is if you look at the dark text, the dark kind of black text, I type that in. But the uh, light gray text is what Power BI automatically figured it out. So as soon as I typed in kind of iTunes, Spotify music, it figured out the rest. And, and the same thing with downloads, as soon as I typed in 3K and 5K, it figured out the rest. And if you look at the query, I'm not sure, I. <laughs> it would have been pretty hard for me to come up with something like that or find a workaround. So certainly by adding data on web by example, that could be useful if you're connecting to a, a web page which is not very clean. Let's talk about the custom visuals. Power BI is certified, it's they're a little easier to find. So certified visuals are just which have gone through a little more rigor and you know, you should feel a little warm and fuzzy using them, a little more comfortable with that. So they've gone through uh, more rigorous testing by the Microsoft team and now they're a little easier to find. Uh, custom visuals, Mapbox is a good one. It's got uh, some really cool updates as well. I believe the chloropleth mapping, which is kind of filling it in. It had some new kind of lasso select and polygon select. It was already a rich measure. In fact, I have an exclusive interview with uh, Ryan Bauman from Mapbox and I would be putting it up on my channel. So watch out for that video as well. I was excited about this visual data box, which 
supposedly you can combine, I mean, standard text you write with kind of measures. And I was excited. I was imagining, I have seen with financial reports that there is a documentary that last year sales with this and blah, blah, and the uh, year rate increases this. And, and it's possible that you could generate something like this. Now, of course, when I have worked, we've had kind of humans entering it and then it was sucked in automatically into the model. They would enter it in like a SharePoint list or some other source and it'll be sucked in. But this could possibly make it at least some part of it automatic, but I was not able to use it. Uh, I only got as far as uh, kind of pretty much the default, which isn't much. It just uh, has this standard text, hello, my friend. Uh, and I did try to edit it, but it, it left me scratching my head, it has some Java code here. If any one of you has figured it out, then I would love to know. Uh, leave a comment and uh, uh, tell me how, uh, uh, what's the best approach to using that tutorial. So that was the July update. Look out for the uh, detailed video on the game-changing common data model feature. Until next time, power on my friend. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.